My name is Alice McDermott, and I'm here to talk about my novel, Charming Billy. Um, not a recent novel, um, and my most recent novel is called Someone. I always think of uh, Nabokov as, as my um, germinal <laughs> novelist. Uh, I, I vividly recall discovering his short stories um, as a very young writer, a college uh, sort of uh, maybe writer, um, and, and reading his short stories and thinking, you know, if you spent your whole life trying to write sentences as beautiful as those and you never quite achieved it, it would still be a nice way to spend your life. I've just rediscovered two books that uh, I read ages ago, and I don't think I appreciated uh, when I read them. One was uh, Willa Cather's Death Comes for the Archbishop, um, which I know I had to read in high school, and I was just recently in Santa Fe for the first time, and, and walking around, and something of the novel came back to me. It even took me a while to think, I've never been here before, but I've read this. And where did I read it? And slowly I, I thought it must be Willa Cather's book. So um, I went off and I bought a copy, <laughs> bought a copy, didn't download it, I bought a copy um, and reread it. Uh, and it's such a beautiful book um, and it's so won wonderfully done. Um, you know, I've heard people say, ah, it doesn't have a plot, it's just, uh, but sentence by sentence, uh, the atmospherics, not just what it says, uh, the way it describes, the way it describes a landscape that made me feel, going there for the first time, I had been there before. Um, those kinds of beautiful, vivid descriptions, um, but just her, her, her wisdom and uh, the way she develops characters, and to be writing about priests, especially missionary priests, um, with none of the, the politically correct biases of the 21st century and just letting them be fully human characters in this tapestry um, of a novel. It's, it's just gorgeous and it made me realize uh, rereading should be essential. We should all, especially English majors, after a certain age, we should like get a letter in the mail and say, you must reread all these books you read when you were 21 now that you're 61. Um, and that's required or we will take your degree away. You know, I always wrote, uh, one of those kids who was always writing stories and keeping diaries that were full of things that didn't really happen, um, somehow thinking someone was going to find this diary and think they really did happen to me. Um, but it took me a long time to make a connection between that and a career as a writer, uh, a profession as a writer. Um, I think, you know, children tell stories or draw pictures, it's just a way of taking control of the world and uh, most of them grow up and try to take control of the world in more practical ways. Those of us who are writers, um, we, we never give up that, uh, that impulse to remake the world. Um, whoever created this world did not do as good a job as we will do when we recreate it. My last novel, Someone, uh, really began with a phrase that's probably very familiar to most New Yorkers um, and maybe not so much to the rest of the country. And that is the phrase parlor, floor, and basement. Um, and that was a term that I always heard growing up, you know, with my relatives who grew up in Brooklyn. Uh, you know, she lives, she lives on the top floor, she lives on the parlor, floor, and basement. And some, there's something so lovely about that phrase. And, and I found when I was trying to develop someone and compose the novel, it was really a, 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 fra a germinal phrase um, because I thought about who says parlor anymore? And it's such a lovely word. Um, and, and it has so many different connotations. Not only come into the parlor, said the spider to the fly, <laughs> you know, but also uh, you know, something genteel about it. Uh, parlor as the place where, where you welcome guests, sort of the public face of your house or your home that you turn to the world, you know, we'll meet in the parlor. Um, and then tied to that, parlor floor and basement. I mean, it's not even cellar, which would be more romantic. Basement is so down to earth, um, literally. Um, and, and, and I just sort of loved the idea. I found myself riffing on that phrase, 
parlor floor, the genteel, uh, the, for the Irish, the lace curtain part <laughs> of the home, and then basement, you know, where the laundry gets done, where uh, things that are a little worn out get tucked away, and also memories get tucked away. Um, and just that, those negotiating between those two things, the face that we turn to the world, the genteel, the civilized, um, and then that underground part um, of all our lives where things are stored or pushed away. And the whole idea of negotiating between the parlor floor and basement, and I guess that goes back to, that's why I loved it, uh, the phrase, because it implies people living in both places. Um, it's not either the parlor floor apartment or the basement apartment. It's the parlor floor and basement apartment. And I, just, the, the, I fell in love with that phrase and, and was very pleased that I was able to get it on the first page of the novel. <laughs>